on the blade. This is going to help you for short distance sprints or if you just want to go faster for a few moments. A great tip for balance on stand-up boards is to remember that if you have two points of contact at all times, you're going to be the most balanced. This is great for when you're trying to step back on the board or if you're just trying to stay upright and dry. You can have three points of contact by putting your paddle in the water or if you take it off, you only have two points of contact with your feet. If you ever want to move on the board, I highly recommend you plant the paddle so it's solid and then you can start moving one foot at a time. There are two major categories of stand-up boards. One of them is surfboards and one of them is race boards. The race boards are designed specifically for racing. They tend to be narrower and longer and their goal is to generate as much speed as possible. Surfboards are designed to ride waves. Two other main categories of stand-up paddle boards are touring boards and entry-level boards. These two designs are a version of a race board or a surfboard where one of the major, major focuses is stability. And the stability comes with the width. Whether paddling a surfboard or a race board, it is important to know that where you stand affects everything. If you have the perfect body position, the perfect stroke, you're in the perfect conditions, if you stand too far forward or too far back on your board, it's going to affect the way the board rides. Most manufacturers suggest you stand directly over the handle since that's the middle or the center of the board. On many race boards and surfboards, it is important to shift your weight forward and back to adjust how the board rides. If you are standing forward or too far forward, it will bury the nose of the board. This will lead to a bunch of good things and a bunch of bad things. If you are standing too far forward on a race board, you will find the nose will dip underwater. This will help the board go straight and it'll lift the tail and make your wake smaller. On the downside, you'll be pushing water and this makes every stroke feel a little bit heavier than it normally does. Now on the opposite, if you were to stand a little bit back in the handle or a little bit too far back, you're going to lift the nose of the board and you're going to dip the tail. What's great about this is it feels lighter in the water and you have greater acceleration since the nose is lifting up and the board starts to plane a little bit. However, when you take a stroke and you accelerate, the tail is going to drop underwater and it's going to create a bigger wave. This is a little bit of drag on the exit, but more importantly, it's a bigger wave for your competition to ride if they're standing behind you and drafting. When starting out stand-up paddling, it's best to stand over the handle. And a common mistake that most beginners do is they squeeze their toes really, really hard trying to hold onto the board. Or what I've also seen is they stand on their tippy toes and they try and figure out why this is so difficult. Once you've found the center of your board, here are a few tips to help you with your balance. First of all, bending your knees brings down your center of gravity and leaning forward makes everything more stable. Whenever you're leaning forward, you always have the chance to put your paddle in the water and support your weight. Anytime your hips go in front of your chest, you're going to fall backwards unless you have really good balance. So remember to bend your knees and try and keep everything forward. As soon as we stand up and we finish our stroke, that is the most likely time to fall backwards off of the board. Another strategy for racers trying to go faster and or doing turns is to step back into your surf stance just a little bit. When this happens, you're creating a triangle between your front foot, your back foot, and where you plant the paddle. And this triangle or tripod is very stable because it's in front of you. And anything that's in front of you allows you to hang your weight and support yourself. It's like having a training wheel on a bicycle. Now the opposite of this is having your feet set the same way and paddling on your backside. When this happens, it creates a line between your feet and the paddle and the lines are very unstable and you can fall either direction. The other thing that happens when you paddle on your backside is as your paddle comes behind you, your triangle shifts behind you and your hips go forward. As soon as this happens, there's nothing for you to stay balanced and you're more likely to fall backwards. So a little trick I use sometimes when I'm tired or when I want to go faster is I will offset my feet just a little bit and I, it allows me to really commit and plant onto the blade. So a great drill to practice your balance, especially on warm summer days when you don't mind getting wet, is the one-footed paddle drill. 
Now what happens is we're gonna start from an in the air paddles up position. We're gonna move our feet a little bit closer together. And if you are paddling on the left side, when you commit your weight to take a stroke, you're gonna lift up the opposite leg back and outside. This is gonna help you learn how to commit your weight and balance. This is very important for timing of when you plant the blade. Again, just like our walking analogy, when we plant our foot, if we time it correctly, it's very easy. If we mistime it and you lean and nothing bites, we're very unstable. So setting the blade at the appropriate time is one of the hardest and most important things to do when trying to go fast or keep your balance. When setting up for your buoy turns, it is important to know the difference between your front side and your back side. When most of us do buoy turns, we try and step back to make faster buoy turns. When this happens, the nose comes up, the tail goes down, and the board gets very tippy, but it also turns really fast. It is important for balance and when we're paddling that we want to paddle on our front side more often than not. The front side is whatever way your front is facing when you step back. Your back side is the opposite. If you were to paddle behind you, this is where my back is, this would be my back side. So now that we've learned how to step back, we're gonna learn how to turn towards our front side. Now there are two ways to do this. You can either paddle on your back side or you can start on the front side and come across the bow. We're gonna start out with the cross bow turn. It's named that for the fact that you cross over the bow with your paddle. It's pretty basic. Once you're in your surf stance and you've passed the buoy, you're gonna take your paddle and without switching your hands, you're gonna come across your board, plant the paddle in the water, and we're gonna push the water underneath the board. Once the water goes underneath the board, you can pick up the paddle, come across the board, place it back in the water, and do a short stroke. Again, if you end up paddling way behind your butt, you're going to want to fall backwards. So this is nice because it creates stability on the turn. It allows you to rest on the turn. However, if there are a lot of people behind you coming up, they're probably not going to slow down and wait for you. So use it when the situation is right. So the other way to do a front side turn, which is turning to your front side, is to paddle on your back side. Now one thing you want to watch out for is your paddle coming behind you. When your paddle comes behind your back, it gives you the tendency to fall backwards. So what we do on the, back, on the front side turn is we plant the paddle and we push away from the nose of the board. Now the trick is to take small strokes. This is going to allow you to keep your balance and get around the turns faster. There are two major tricks you want to keep an eye on when making a backside buoy turn. One is when you step back, you want to do it when you're even with the buoy. 
because once you do, the board's gonna stop. The second is to shift your weight forward and to take a long pushing out, sweeping around the tail stroke. This gets the board around a little bit quicker and helps keep your balance. All right, it is important to set up your turn before you get to the turn. So as you're coming up to the turn, you already know what you're gonna do and you're aware of the people around you. As you come up for a backside turn, it is very important to let the board go past the buoy before you start your big sweeping turn. This will allow the board to get around the turn without running into the buoy. Again, setting up your approach to the turn, coming in for a backside turn, allowing the board to go past the buoy as you step back, away from the nose, around the tail, and you're out the other side. Are mi ti feri piti te e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e